Welcome to this week's edition of Harper's Bazaar Arabia's Currently Trending podcast. I'm Louise Nickel, Editor-in-Chief of Harper's Bazaar, and I'm joined this week by Nadine Attar, the Jeddah-based jewellery designer behind Nadine Jewellery, whose gorgeous creations have already adorned Alessandra Ambrosio and are featured on the July-August cover of Harper's Bazaar Arabia. We're also joined by Mohamed Sultan, Bazaar's resident style arbiter and best dressed expert, who introduces us to his virtual new friend. Thank you so much for joining us here today in the Harper's Bazaar currently trending studio. I have Nadine Attar, the Jeddah based jeweler behind Nadine Jewelry, your own line of high and fine jewelry. Yes. Welcome. Thank you so much, Thank you. It's nice seeing you today. Lovely seeing you. And of course, Mohammed Sultan, our arbiter of style, taste, and what's hot and what's not. Thank you, Louise. (laughs) (laughs) I don't look hot today. As you can see, I'm in my gym gear, but you know what? I prefer looking ugly and doing a podcast for you. Never, never, (laughs) never. No, you look amazing, as always. But thanks for joining us here today. And we wanted to start talking about the July-August issue of Harper's Bazaar, which actually features Nadine's jewellery on the cover. (laughs) And what's really exciting about this is you are from Jeddah. You went to school there. And our cover star for the summer issue is also from Jeddah. She was raised there, went to school there and is now on the cover of an international fashion magazine, Talida Tamer. She's an 18-year-old budding model uh, from Jeddah. And I think it's probably the first time that a model from Saudi is on the cover of an international fashion magazine, which may not sound like a huge deal to those of us from the West, but for someone from Saudi, this is a fairly large cultural move. Would you agree with that, Nadine? Yeah, it's um, it's a uh, it's a very um, surprising move, and it's uh, it's positive in my opinion because um, it demonstrates diversity uh, being created in our society today, and uh, women women going or starting to seek other different careers than the usual than what we see today in the country. And uh, what I like about Talid is that she's doing it very tastefully, very respectfully. And um, yeah, I, I wish her the best of luck. It's really, uh, like you said, Luis, extremely exciting to have someone represent from the region finally. So seeing Talida pioneering in a domain that didn't really actually exist prior to her standing up and saying, you know what, this is a career move that I'd like to take. And um, the way I look at it is like, I'm so glad that someone with the courage, let's start, prior to the ambition of being a model, is actually stepping through to do something. She's only 18, but look at her. She's absolutely stunning. She's representing an entire nation. There's going to be a lot of pressure for her, for sure. But um, we should all stand by her and be behind her. I mean, she's representing not just Saudi Arabia. She's representing every single Arab girl that is out there. Yeah, that's a huge pressure. <laughs> it is, yes, it is. I think what really appealed to us about Talida is that she's got this really unique beauty, which we reference in the cover line. She doesn't look like a copy-paste of the kind of Insta girls. She uh, hasn't dabbled in surgery or this yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. She doesn't hide behind layers of makeup. She's really true to herself, and she's really celebratory, I think, of an individuality that sometimes the fashion industry is slightly in danger of losing sight of. And it's quite hard for us all when we're on social media all day, you see this homogenous, identical beauty to really have the confidence to celebrate your own so-called imperfections or flaws and say, I am beautiful and I may not have fixed my nose or have, you know, plumped up my lips, but this is me and I don't feel the need to bow to that pressure. And I think that's a really positive message. Well, she doesn't really need to fit into any mold, you know. She just needs to be her. She's a young 18-year-old girl who's very beautiful and she should just have fun and enjoy her time as well while she's doing this you know absolutely i think it's really amazing that um she she doesn't get into this whole trend of fixing your nose fixing your lips fixing your cheeks um it it kind of puts me back to you know where the time in the 50s and the 60s where you see Sophia Loren, Elizabeth Taylor, they all look beautiful and they look different and 
It yeah. doesn't it doesn't matter if your nose is perfect or your lips are perfect and Talita is beautiful anyway and I would really really um tell her or advise her to stick to her natural beauty and not get into any Absolutely. Uh, and I think what's important there is that we come back to the fact that we can't stereotype women and we can't stereotype Saudi women which I think the west is often in danger of doing and particularly in Jeddah there's a huge melting pot of ethnicities that play into um, the physicality of, of women in Jeddah yeah. and yeah. like the geography of Saudi is huge it's not all one type of person and someone like Talida represents different nationalities in this melting pot her mother's Italian her father's Saudi and I think others in Jeddah are the same so it I hope sends a positive message to girls that when they see someone who comes from an equally diverse background, such as themselves, but went to school in Jeddah, was raised there, lives in that society, can be recognized by the international fashion community. I hope that sends a positive message of acceptance. Definitely. I mean, generally, um, well, Jeddah is known, or, or the Western region in general in Saudi, <coughs> is known for, um, for its diverse ethnicity because we have people coming from all over the world for Hajj and Umrah. So yeah, by right. default, we get uh, a lot of foreigners in. And so we're very um, accepting to different cultures to different cultures, and we blend in somehow. And that's why we look different. Hospitality uh, is also part yeah. of our tradition. Yeah, you know? So we're yeah. very welcoming yeah. and, you know, very like uh, wholeheartedly open to, bring, you know, inviting people and showing them our culture and explaining to them our traditions. And I hope she also carries that with her, you know, to, like you said, Louise, the Western world has a stereotype in their head. And it's people like Talida now that should stand up as a voice for us. Like I said, it's not just about modeling. She's representing yes. an entire nation. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think above that, people may have expected a Saudi model to wear a hijab, maybe to be a bit closer to Halima Aden in terms of the aesthetic or the way that she dresses, which isn't something that Talida does. She dresses in a westernized way when she's out of Saudi, but respectfully. Yeah. And um, I think that's also, you know, representative of a group of girls who also choose to dress like that and to act like that. But I think where Halima has been so great is she is changing the industry in that not in that not only in that designers are creating hijabs for her to wear or allowing her to not wear trousers she would always wear a skirt over the trousers or a dress but they're also bringing in changing rooms backstage at fashion shows so I think the modeling industry which was highly unregulated and obviously there were horrible abuses going on which has come out through the Me Too campaign does now have a spotlight on it and is being better regulated so hopefully the stage is being set for the likes of Talida to enter an environment that is safer is less open to abuse and in which she can retain her own values and reject nudity or reject things she's uncomfortable with it's about time it's about it time. is it is I wanted to read this quote we um interviewed Rosie Huntington Whiteley for the April issue of, of Harper's Bazaar. And she said, I've done countless fashion shows where you're in a room undressing, photographers flying around, people with iPhones, all the crowd and audience coming after the show and you're still half dressed, people taking photographs of you while you're getting changed. It blows my mind that that's acceptable. And I think she's very, very right. And yes. until that changes, you can see why it's hard for women from the Gulf or girls from the Gulf to enter this industry yeah but yeah. I think the positive thing is that that is changing and as long as girls like Talida stand true to themselves and maintain their values and ideals then it's important that she uh, she really emphasizes on that and and it would be her um, like uh, uh, holding on to a, a, a principle and and changing the industry like you said with this with this new message, which should be very positive on her side. Yeah, we um, f for the issue, we actually introduced Talida to Isabelle Fontana, the um, South American supermodel. Brazilian, actually. Brazilian. Yeah. 
who has been a Victoria's Secret model. She's been shot by all the top photographers, been on the cover of huge magazines and has a wealth of experience and knowledge. And she had a much tougher time, I suppose, coming into the industry. She left home at 15. She went to Paris. She didn't speak a word of English or French. You know, she really struggled through the ranks. And in fact, she tells the story of at 15, a stylist pressuring her to take her top off. And she refused and she stood firm and she said, absolutely not. I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not going to do it. And, you know, fortunately, it, she was safe in that environment. It didn't prove a problem. She went on to have this stellar career. But it does show how tough the industry was at that time. I think Talida's coming into it from a different standpoint. She's 18. She's finished school. Her mother was also a model and is able to guide her career and is with her on all the shoots and I think can keep her in a safe environment. And now the industry is a, is a different place. I don't think you can have behavior like that anymore. Certainly not in acceptance. You know, we live in an credible. era yeah, yeah. that yeah, um, uh, does not allow any of that to happen. Yeah. And I'm glad that there is a movement now to stop all of this uh, disgusting uh, behavior that used to happen for all the previous models that uh, became a super success or the ones that you know, decided to move on from all of that because it didn't work for them. Male and female, might I add, you know, yeah. a lot of them struggled. Um, it's unfortunate uh, for them at the time, and but I'm glad that this movement is going to change. It's about time, and I hope that the change only develops yes. for the future. So more girls like Talida do step forward, hopefully, yeah. and uh, conquer the fashion industry. And also to help um, encourage the families that they need behind them to support them and to open their minds to these dreams that these girls may have, that it, that it is a safe environment. Isabelle says in, in the issue, at 15 years old, you have to grow up fast. Modeling is highs and lows. You can get depressed. It gets into your soul. It can destroy you if you're not strong enough and you don't have your family to support you. So it's not all glamour. No. And, you know, it's really no, hard. Family support is key to any, um, any kind of success, I believe, uh, to women especially. Because um, I feel that the past um, few decades, women have been uh, pushed into doing things that are not acceptable. And um, to have family support gives you strength mm. to continue with whatever you had in mind with the principles that you want to dictate on the industry. How, how, Nadine, how was it for you when you launched your own company? Uh, <laughs> it was, uh, well, thankfully, I also had family support. I, uh, I had the support of my father and my brothers um, to, well, we're already in this industry anyway. In the jewelry uh, in, industry. Uh, in jewelry and watches. And uh, we are the agents of Rolex, Chopard, and Hublot uh, in, in Saudi Arabia. And we have been working with brands for a very long time. My father at the beginning thought I would continue in my banking career. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I did an interview with him uh, a few days ago. I posted it on my website, something very simple. But I asked him and he said that, uh, well, you were doing so well in banking. I thought you would become a CEO or something. Um, but he specifically said you superseded all my expectations. And it's a good validation to get from my father because he has been in the industry for more than 40 years and um, his guidance means a lot to me. And it's a big responsibility to keep up with that and, and uh, uh, keep the momentum going and uh, um, to keep impressing people. It's, uh, it's a responsibility. Absolutely. Well, we're glad that you're you know, that you're also doing it, uh, empowering uh, women and being an example to all of them in a, a very difficult domain, might I add. Jewelry designing is not easy. And um, clearly from the work that I see, um, you have beautiful things and uh, we're very excited to have you on our cover this um, issue. Um, uh, so yeah, all the best to you and all the best to an entire new nation of yeah. Saudi Arabian women that are empowering and taking over and conquering the world. And I, you know, I think Talida is going to be in a position potentially, you know, when the magazine's out, that 
she is going to face criticism. Let, let's be honest. I think yeah. absolutely. Yeah. When you're the first, it's not going to be easy. It's it's normal. I it's mean, with every success easy. comes criticism yeah. somehow. But so we need to be so there for her. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. She, she says in the interview. I've had negative comments such as, oh, she's Saudi, so she shouldn't be doing that. But I'm grateful it hasn't been that bad. I think the majority of our generation is so mature and enlightened. They just want to share positivity and grow and evolve. You'll always get negative people, but I don't take it to heart. So I think that message of sharing positivity is something. I'm glad she has a solid uh, head on her, on her shoulders. It's important yeah. for her morale that yeah. she takes things at a peaceful level and not, you know... Not that hard. Actually, I think this criticism is only going to make her stronger. Yeah, to be I quite agree. honest. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, certainly something she's thought about. And while we accept that Saudi women can be bankers, can be designers, yeah. can <laughs> be philanthropists, and can increasingly speak out, we see Princess Rima speaking at Davos, you know, with this incredible presence and credibility. And modeling has not obviously fallen into that category for all those reasons we've been mentioning. But I don't think that necessarily makes it any less valid. And if Saudi has a population of 33 million, then of course, you know, some of those girls are going to want to pursue, you know, Something a career. Different. There's a huge diverse population. Not everyone can be a business leader. And um, I think Talida says that... Um, she said, when I got older, I thought, why do these women, talking about women represented by the fashion industry, not look like me? Why could it not be done in a way that's respectful of the culture? The job of a model is to sell a product, and it's important to sell to all kinds of demographics and cultures. I remember seeing the model Iman on YouTube. She was talking about being a Muslim and Somali. And I thought, why can't we have a Saudi model? She's able to keep her religion and do what she's passionate about. So she's certainly thought it through I think she understands the ramifications and the implications and it's a decision that she's happy with that her family are happy with um, and I having wish. having a, a mom that uh, that also used to be in the industry helps her a lot to think about it and actually see the other side that other people don't know so she has an example with her that um, that I think I mean a, a good role model to uh, to give her the boost to actually pursue something like that. And I think she's open to criticism if it's done constructively. She says um, constructive criticism can be valuable. It can help you to better yourself, and I will try to use it to improve. I'm representing Saudi wi women who are beautiful, strong women, so I want to try my best to, to do that to the best of my abilities. But if it's just people being negative, there's nothing you can do about it. That's true. Yeah. So I think, you know, for a, for an 18 year old, I think she's really mature. She, yeah, yeah. She's obviously she's thought about it. She obviously understands the implications. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of that, recently there's been like a huge uh, change that happened in Saudi Arabia, which is really exciting. Women are finally allowed to drive cars. They are. Now we have to ask Nadine, did you drive here? from Jetta. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, when that happened, I was in Dubai. <laughs> I um, <clears throat> I do drive. I mean, I've been driving for a long time ago um, because I'm half Egyptian. So I drove in Egypt since 2006. Um, I have long experience in driving. haven't driven yet in Jeddah, but hopefully soon. And uh, it's a really good move because... Um, it gives us the option to, I mean, take control on where to go and when. The fact that we couldn't commute unless someone took us from point A to point B, it, it was very frustrating. I you know. look at it from an economical perspective. I think oh. it's just going to boost <laughs> that, businesses. That's another, <laughs> yeah. that's another know, issue. It's going yeah. to like, uh, it's, 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 it's a very, very, very important time in my yeah, opinion. You know, you're empowering women, you're allowing them to drive, you're opening new job opportunities. We're talking yes. about, you know, female taxi drivers, Ubers, valet services, petrol stations, you know, female in service that help, uh, you know, uh, car sales. And it's, it's just a big, deal all, all around you know I think the driving thing, thing is symbolic but it's just a step towards women's participation in the wider economy yes. which is yes. the end goal yeah. and the end game I yeah, assume yeah, yeah. absolutely I mean this is just a start and it's a beautiful start in my opinion um, we're just gonna have to see what's gonna happen in the next few years I believe you know literally 
Saudi Arabian women are going to be conquering Saudi Arabia. Yeah. I hope to see some in parliament. I hope to see some, you know, standing by the king. I hope to see ambassadors across the world representing our nation and not just in a modeling domain, but in every in single any, uh, perspective yeah. that in you could possibly yeah. imagine in terms of job titles. Yeah, I agree. Hopefully yeah. soon. And I think what's also great is to have the male population behind them and to, That's, and to back I them. am all for it, Louise. I have four sisters. <laughs> there are a lot of Saudi males that are very supportive of women and of um, pushing them to be more active, to be more productive, which is really great. And, and I think they're becoming more and more. I mean, they exist already. And they're increasing because, you yeah. know... We have a small cameo role from one such um, young prince, Prince Faisal bin Bandar Al Saud, who's just 33. And he very kindly agreed to take a small supporting role. And note the word supporting. <laughs> he wasn't the main act in the in the fashion shoot with Talida and lend his voice to her as a model, making this stand, or his face, I should say, um, being as it's a, a photo shoot, and to Nadine as the, the jewellery that we're showcasing as well. So he was willing to take a back seat, but yet have his presence be known that we're celebrating two Saudi young women's participation in the fashion and jewellery industry. This issue is going to be mind-blowing. Actually, I'm so <laughs> excited said, I'm just going to read you what show. he says. He says... Um, I'm sending a message. A woman should be able to do whatever she wants to do, to have a voice and a face and to assert herself just as equally as any man. And I think for a young prince from the royal family to come out and say that and appear as the supporting role in, in a fashion story is not something that would have been conceivable a few years ago. And um, thank you so much to... Prince Faisal for taking that step. Thank you. We wish to see more guys like you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. no, Faisal is a nice guy. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> he, he is a great guy. I, on that note, I'm also fascinated about what is going on in Saudi from a fashion point of view. Because with the culture opening up and um, things changing, I feel like this this has got to have an impact on the way people dress, the way people wear jewelry, yeah, the true. way people present themselves. And I think from what I understand, Riyadh is still quite different to Jeddah. In Jeddah today, I mean, um, women, um, I wouldn't call them abayas. We were just talking about, remember the coats thing, the, the yes. printed ones that uh, th these are becoming more in fashion. I personally have one. And it's not even long. It's like beneath, like the uh, ankles, but, over, yeah, the ankles? Uh, over the ankles, okay. yeah. And um, it's yeah that the attire of abayas is changing. It's becoming like at a length of a lab coat. Okay, so but, more of a statement, basically, yeah, yeah, than exactly, traditional. Exactly. Okay. So it, and it's printed in many colors. I see red, pink, the patterns blue and patterns, and, and kind of yeah. bohemian. -y, I, I have a Coachella. I have a tribal what about the kind of. Well, the headscarf hasn't been mandatory for quite some time. In Jeddah. But in, in Jeddah. Riyadh, they've recently lifted it. Yeah, yeah. in Riyadh, it, yeah. It's becoming easy now. Yeah. So yeah. that's a really good thing yeah. as well, you know, where it's like not compulsory anymore. Yeah, I feel like in, in Riyadh, people do wear traditional wear more, yes. but you see more color now. It's less uniform a black abaya. Yes, yes, and it, there's I agree. a bit more color coming in. Yeah. Mind you, I'm very traditional. I actually love looking at the old school stuff, you know, just for me, it's like very nostalgic. It's very, it's celebrating our tradition and culture. It's incredibly elegant. I, the, I, I it's find the notion it beautiful. of choice, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, know, exactly. This is just my opinion. As I said, um, girls don't hate me. I mean, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> no I, what if black's not your color? Exactly. I you mean, you can, I'm pink. glad that they're, diversif <laughs> they're diversifying it in that sense. But um, I, I just personally, I'm like, probably call me old school if you have to. I love the solid black, simple, you know, elegant, and not the ones that we've recently seen in the past two decades, but more of the traditional ones from the 80s or the 70s, looking at it from a historical perspective. So seeing it evolve is beautiful in a way. I just hope they kind of like still stay in touch from a traditional perspective. I'm, I'm all for, I mean, to me, it's all about um, giving the choice. I mean, if 
if a woman feels comfortable in abaya, that's good for her. There's no problem with that. If another one prefers to wear something colored, something more modern, to me, it's about the choice, not about... Uh, Having the choice, ha- yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, I agree with yeah. you. A fashion observer said to us also in this issue, which I think is quite an interesting point, is that in Jeddah, because it's more now about these coats or kind of robes and things, that she sees Jeddah as becoming more of a center for modest fashion that that kind of trend that has swept in terms of it's not about traditional or cultural wear it's more about covering up but in a in high a, fashion yes, way yes yes and we see websites like the modest based in dubai and halima i guess is also kind of a poster girl for this way of dressing yeah well we have princess dina as well who's extremely elegant and kept it modest throughout you know absolutely um there from a personal perspective and what i have seen generally visiting jeddah and saudi arabia and riyadh Girls are extremely fashionable. Yeah. Le- you know, not not leave alone public appearances, but they have amazing immaculate taste. Like I mentioned just two seconds ago, Princess Dina being a pioneer herself, you know, she's very iconic. You have a, bu- a lot, a lot of beautiful girls that have amazing taste in Saudi. I just would love to see more of them. Under the above. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, no, not just, you know, like... I'd love to see them in our magazine more often. Absolutely. I'd love to see them. No, We'd love to have them. There. We have many. <laughs> Email me. Uh, Hopefully, fashion. Nadine can help us with that. You know, <laughs> we have like many uh, fashion <laughs> designers. I mean, I could name uh, Sutra, like Maryam bin Mahfouz, and she even has, uh, I think, her ateliers here in Dubai. We have Nasiba Hafiz. We have uh, many uh, Saudi fashion. Uh, Razan Azuni. We've featured all three of those. Ladies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but I'm, I was talking more from like you know. Like a from the society, from society, society yeah. girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and you're right, is, and you're yeah. absolutely right. We there should, are many there girls. There should be a lot of knowledge about this, you yeah. know. I think this is another another way where Talida is perhaps a bit representative. I don't want to put that burden on her, but she, under the abaya, she dresses in a way that many women dress under the abaya. Absolutely. It's just that we don't often see Get it. Get to see that, yes. true. Um, and certainly in in Saudi, in Riyadh, in Jeddah, women are incredibly fashionable. I'm hearing, my source on the ground is telling me that Off-White, Supreme and Yeezy are wardrobe staples currently in are Riyadh. They? In Riyadh particularly, wow. apparently. The kids are going mad for them. So streetwear is like... <laughs> yeah, streetwear apparently cool, is, huh? is the thing <laughs> to be wearing. Well, we're, we're going to be covering a lot of that, aren't we, Louise? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we are. <laughs> and on that note, I think, um, just to finish up, talking about the younger generation and, and what they're inspired by at the moment, in the July-August issue of Bazaar, we are also having the Middle Eastern debut of Mohammed's good friend. My little amazing friend. Nunori. <laughs> Nunori, yes. <laughs> Who is a digital influencer. influencer. Talk to us, Mohammed, about Nunori. I, I came across Nunori b- by coincidence just on my Explore page on Instagram. and I clicked on her and I immediately went through, you know, her images. And mind you, I'm speaking about a virtual character here, so she doesn't really exist. And I make <laughs> Disclaimer. <it> so <laughs> <laughs> and I saw her wearing the latest uh, runway, um, you know, a lot of she was she's got Dior on her feet. She's got Kim Kardashian West cosmetics. She's doing a lot of amazing things, and it's all digitally created. So I was like, I need to tap onto this ASAP. So I immediately messaged uh, Louise, and I said to her, "There's this character. We have to feature her. She's absolutely amazing. Leave it to me. I'm gonna get her dressed in a Middle Eastern designer outfit, but she needs to feature on my style icon page by my best dressed." And uh, yeah, I got in touch. Out of luck, the her Nunuri's dad responded to me and said yes, she'd be delighted to do it. So it was really exciting. It was a lot of back and forth, I believe, but yeah. we managed to we sort it out. So yeah, there's this huge movement around digital characters right now. And um, reading a few articles, apparently people are okay with it. You know, I, I mean, I think we're we're all sitting here in our twenties, Nadine. <laughs> <laughs> 30s. I'm hanging on to my 30s just. I've not got long to go, but I am still there for Mohammed and I. <laughs> Don't ask me in a month's time because that decade will have changed. Oh, no. <laughs> so for us, it's it's a bit alien. The younger generation, the Gen Z have no problem with the fact that these influencers are computer generated. They don't draw a distinction between a computer generated influencer and a real living 
breathing influencer, which is quite fascinating. But I think something we have to get our heads around because I think, these are our kids. Uh, yeah, I this think I'm trying to, di to digest the idea. <laughs> the dean does look a little bit shell-shocked. There's another one who, um, in, in it's, it's gone totally meta. She's started talking back to her creator Whoa. and kind of, oh, wow. I don't know if you watch Westworld, which is all about artificial intelligence, but these robots kind of become human. They, they almost supersede oh, yes. their programming. And it, it's almost like that's what's going on, you know, this. And it, it's really fascinating. It sounds a bit crazy for us now, but we need to, like, pay attention to these little things because that's what the digital world is moving towards right now. Uh, I and I think we found a, a perfect fit for us to have Nunuri on board, you know, yeah. on our pages. She's stylish. She ticks all the boxes on the guidelines of Harper's Bazaar in style and fashion and lifestyle. And so. if you look on the website, www.harpersbazaarabia.com, you can see Nunori at the top of the Burj Khalifa, yes. surveying oh, wow. the, the Dubai landscape in, in her Zuhair Murad, Zuhair Murad yes. finery. Haute Couture. Yeah. I'm going to check that out. <laughs> <laughs> you must. And I think that, you know, it, it sounds alien to us in the way that perhaps 10 years or even fewer, the idea of a Saudi model sounded alien to many many people and I think that's probably what today's really been about is evolution and acceptance and realizing that the world does move on absolutely and times change and we need to find a way to make that a positive experience to absolutely I'm glad that here at Harper's Bazaar we actually embrace these things we pioneer in that actually uh, we uh, we look for things that still fit into our vision from a futuristic perspective. And um, I'm glad that I work personally as a contributor here with a beautiful team Thank who is you. behind this beautiful publication. Yes, Thank yes, you. I agree. I mean, it's been a pleasure being here and getting to know the team and being part of, uh, you know, this issue coming and, you know, Harper's support. It uh, means a lot. It does to us as well. Thank you both so very much for joining Thank us. Thank you for having us. Here today. <laughs> and have a wonderful summer. Thanks. You too. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Nadine. Thanks, Mohammed. My pleasure. Thank you for listening to Currently Trending from Harper's Bazaar Arabia. Please comment on our Instagram or Facebook pages at Harper's Bazaar Arabia. And don't forget to rate, review and subscribe on iTunes.